everyone, it's another beautiful day here at the Arboretum. And this space is where we feature the majority of our tree and shrub collections, including our lilac collection. And because of the emphasis on the trees and shrubs, there tends to be a lot more turf or grass in this garden than any of our others. So we're joining uh, Jim Mack, our head of horticulture today, in order to chat a little bit about tips on how to care for grassy areas in a sustainable way, thanks to our partners at John Deere. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jen. How's it going today? Fantastic. Great. Now, when I was at the store recently, there were a lot of different options for grass seed. Can you give us some advice on what to look for if we're looking to plant some stuff in our lawn? Absolutely, and I totally get the fact that there are way more brands and choices than there needs to be. It basically comes down to finding a turf grass that is looking to suit your needs, but in a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of things do we want for a sustainable grass? Well, I look for things such as we have here in the Arboretum that are going to stand up to foot traffic. Okay. I don't have to feed them. Right. I don't have to water them much. Right. And they're tough as nails. Okay. So what variety would we maybe want to choose? So the ones that I look for are the deep rooting cultivars. Okay. And uh, instantly comes to mind are the new and improved turf grass tall fescue cultivars. Okay because they can put down roots, believe it or not, three feet oh, wow. once established. Yeah, so then they wouldn't need a lot of water. Once they're good and established, that is true. Then they become drought tolerant. Nice. Okay. And do we have any idea of um, what it would need for fertilizer? Because a lot of grasses or lawns need a lot of fertilizer. Absolutely. So the uh, turf type tall fescue only requires a minimal amount of fertilizer, meaning about two pounds of actual nitrogen per year. And what does that mean? That means that if you just leave the clippings on your turf, mm -hmm. saving you all that time and effort and giving you more time to come to the RBG, <laughs> you would have satisfied that uh, uh, fertilizer requirement. So way less work then. Way less as opposed to the uh, bluegrass varieties that need three to four pounds to look good. Okay so this sounds like it's less work for us and it's more environment, environmentally friendly. And it saves you cash. That's great. Now how about mowing? Do we have any uh, advice for how to mow our lawns? Yeah the, uh, the, the, the rule of thumb a lot of rule of thumbs in horticulture of is really to think about the height of your turf okay. and uh, you don't want to take any more than a third off at a time okay. so that means on periods where it's growing really quickly you might need to mow once a week okay. and then uh, in the heat of the summer maybe every other week mm -hmm. and how long should we be leaving our lawn? well uh, forget about first of all the way that your dad taught you to mow we're not looking to create a croquet course no. or lawn bowling or anything like that. You, the, the bigger, the taller, the better. I usually pick about three and a half inches, sometimes even four inches in the summer, because uh, contrary to popular opinion, leaving the grass longer allows it to require less water, not more water. Right. Because it's shading the ground. Because it's shading the ground, absolutely. That's perfect. Right. Well, that's uh, a lot of great tips for us here. Thank you so much, Jim, for your time. Anytime. Thank you very much. And uh, come see us, uh, our many collections here at the Royal Botanic Gardens, and uh, enjoy walking on the turf. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.